Hey, what's going on, Sports Cars fans? It's Ray from Philly here on this Friday night, October 9th, Friday night vintage. I haven't done a Friday night vintage video in like three or four weeks. I've been trying to get together to try and do a video on Friday night. Seems like that's always my favorite night to show a vintage cards. It's the end of the week, and I like showing them uh, vintage stuff on Friday nights. I've been so busy on Fridays and Saturdays that I've been doing a lot of my videos on Sunday afternoons, which... I don't know, I hate doing videos on Sundays, it's just like a boring day. But here it is, Friday night, and I'm showing a card for the 300 great baseball cards of the 20th century by Mike, by uh, Mr. Mike Payne. This is my 178th card of the set. But before I do that, just a couple of things I wanted to go over. Number one, uh, I hope you guys were able to check out my most recent episode of Sports Card Talk, episode number 13. Uh, with myself and my co-host Mike from This Baseball Card Life. I uploaded the, uh, we uploaded the video last night and we had a guest on Mr. Michael Gibbons who was the who was the president of the Babe Ruth Birthplace Museum uh, down in Baltimore. I've been to that museum. It's a fantastic museum. I'm planning on going there again next year, hopefully when things are smoother uh, to be able to visit places like that. I mean it is open on the weekend so uh, you, you can go down now if you want. But it's a great place down in Baltimore. I highly recommend it. Check out the video. It was a lot of fun. Mr. Gibbons was a wealth of knowledge, and he was a lot of fun to uh, have on the show. So check that out. Uh, also, um, uh, it's uh, if, if you saw the beginning, heard, listened to the music in the beginning of this video, it was uh, a song from Van Halen, Running With The Devil, from Van Halen's first album, Van Halen 1. Um, some of you know that I play guitar and I've been playing guitar since the early 80s, since like 81, 82. So we're talking almost 40 years. I've been in bands, a lot of bands, uh, you know, for most of my life. Uh, even toured a little bit in the, in the mid 80s and 86. So we did a lot of recording sessions. And so I've been around the block a little bit when it comes to music. And Eddie Van Halen was the reason why I picked up the guitar and not only picked up the guitar, but learned how to play it not that i say i play anything like him because eddie to me is the greatest guitar player that ever lived um jimmy hendrix and and was an innovator and so was eddie i mean there was other guitar players that came out after eddie that like steve Vai and ingve malmstein and joe satriani uh, really they didn't innovate anything all they did was just play the same things that eddie did 10 times faster and to me, not to knock those guys, they're fantastic guitar players, but speed isn't everything. It's not just about speed. So the only thing they really added to me was speed. And again, they're legendary guitar players. Steve I is a phenomenal guitar player. But Eddie was on a different planet because he not only was fast, but he was an innovator. Uh, he started with the whammy bar. You guitar players out there know what I'm talking about. Like Hitman 23, Mike Paisan, how you doing, man? He knows what I'm talking about with, with the whammy bar and uh, the two-hand two, two hand finger tapping, which Eddie got from Jimmy Page, where Jimmy Page was just doing one hand, and then Eddie just came on with the second hand and did two-hand finger tapping. These things were never done before, the, the whammy bar and the two-hand finger tapping and the dive bombs and the harmonics and the pinch harmonics and the brown sound. He just... A guitar tablature was created because of Eddie Van Halen. Look it up. He was just, he he changed the game like in sports. Wilt Chamberlain changed the game. They created a lot of rules around Wilt Chamberlain. Babe Ruth changed the game. Wayne Gretzky changed the game in hockey. Muhammad Ali changed the boxing game. That's Eddie Van Halen. He changed the game when it came to guitar playing. Um, so it was a, a terrible loss. A lot of guitar players, anybody that's, over 50 years old in my age group that plays guitar, if they don't say uh, that Eddie Van Halen was a main influence on them, I'd be shocked because, uh, like I said, I started playing around 81 and Van Halen was right in their prime. And um, I played a lot of clubs in the Philadelphia Tri-State area and, and everybody that was playing in, in my age group was just totally copying uh, Eddie Van Halen. I was. We all were. I mean, you wanted to be just like him. Nobody came out after Eddie and did their own thing. It was just a, a remake or a copy of what he did. So that's why since him, there's been nobody that has and that, that has changed the game. So rest in peace, 
uh, Mr. Edward Van Halen, the greatest guitar player of all time, bar none. So enough of that. Um, it, it's just sad to see someone, you know, only 65 years old, um, go so early in life. But big fan of Van Halen. Um, you know, it's just a tragic loss. But on to the 300 great baseball cards. Uh, this is card number 178 for me. So just chugging right along on this set. I haven't done a video on a 300 set in probably four weeks. I think I can't remember was the last one I showed. I think I can't remember what's the last 300 card I showed. But this is a card um, from the 51 Bowman set. I did a video uh, on a 51 Bowman card about a week ago, and that was the Nelly Fox rookie. But that's not a part of the 300 great baseball cards of the 20th century by Mike Payne set. That's in the post-war rookie Hall of Fame set. Okay, this guy put it in a padded mailer, which is fine, inside of an envelope. And inside, this is literally paper towel. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting, to say the least. I am out of paper towel, so maybe I can use this one. <laughs> it's a 1951 Bowman of Warren Spahn in the new lighthouse holder, and this looks better than the grade. And the PSA 3, VG3. And this is one of my all time favorite cards. There's just something about the early Bowman cards that are just spectacular. And this is my favorite early 50s Bowman card, is, is this 51 Warren Spahn. Just a fantastic looking card. And I, I don't know, man. Would you think that's a three? I mean, the centering is almost spot on. There's no creases on there. Oh, there is. There is one crease on the left near his back. Right over here. But, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with the grade. I was looking for like a four or five. But um, for some reason, they've been kind of scarce lately, this card. I don't know why. They were up a lot before. And now I haven't been seeing too many of them, but I'm going to flip the phone around, give you guys a closer look at this card, and read the excerpt from the book. So hold on. Okay, and we're back, and man, the, the more I look at this card, it just looks really good. The registrations on this is good. You might be able to see the cre a little bit of a line crease here, but it's not all the way through. It's more like a surface crease, because if this was a deeper crease, it wouldn't have gotten a three. It would have gotten a two. The back is clean, and 51 Bowman's backs are known for having stains on them. This doesn't have a stain, and I'm pleased with it. It's it's a good grade. It's very good. And let's read the excerpt from the book. How am I doing on these two pages? I have that one. I don't have neither one of these. And, oh, by the way, yes, um, rest in peace to Whitey Ford, who passed away today at the age of 91. I mean... So many legendary players have left this, left us in the past month or two, from Tom Seaver, Lou Brock, Bob Gibson, and now Whitey Ford. It's just been, you know, one of those years. Um, I'm definitely, this is next on my list that I'm looking for is the 51 Bowman Yogi Bear. I have that one, I have that one, and now I have this one. So those are the only two on this, these two pages that I'm short of but let's read what mr payne has to say about this card 1951 bowman warren spawn card 134 spawn insane and pray for rain and in the late 1940s that was just about the truth for the boston braves who were led by johnny who were led by spawn and johnny sane but by the mid middle of 1951 sane was gone to the yankees that left spawn who with his high leg kick won 22 games and completed an amazing 26 games of the 36 he started. One of the greatest left-handed pitchers of all time. He has, I think, um, I should have looked this up, I think, I'm going by memory, 363 wins, which is unbelievable. One of the, probably, the, I think he's the winningest left-handed pitcher. I know he's got more than Carlton. He's got more than Randy Johnson. Uh, I don't think that there's another left-hander that has more wins than the great Warren Spahn. So there, there you have it with that. Put the perfect fit sleeve on there. Register this bad boy. And 
That's card number 178 for me for the 300 great baseball cards of the 20th century by that man right there, Mr. Mike Payne. All right, guys, I appreciate all your likes and your comments. Stay tuned for more PSA graded baseball cards. Thanks for uh, subscribing and keep on collecting and make sure, like I always say, have fun with it. Take care, guys, and see you real soon. Bye-bye.